Welcome back guys. Today's video, I'm going to teach y'all how to build your team from scratch and everything you need to know. Go ahead, like, and subscribe to get started and supporting me. I'm close to 20K y'all. Thank y'all so much. See, there's two ways to build your team and lineup. There's free to play, which means you spend zero money on the game and everything you get, it's free and a bit of luck. With free to play, there's nothing wrong with it, but then there's paid to win which you spend money to get players, you know, open packs, and basically means you spending money to win. But I tried this before and I can tell you it's definitely a thing. I've spent money trying to upgrade my subscribers account and the players I got were, wow, I'll never forget that. But I'm gonna go through both ways to building a team, free to play and paid to win, enjoy the video guys. First, let's start with free to play. And with free to play, you must use your resources and knowledge to your advantage because there's players spending real life money and getting whatever they want. And remember, you don't spend money on this game. Therefore, you have to use what you have and knowledge to building the best team possible. And since you ain't getting much things, you should do anything in your favor, meaning you should do earn gem surveys and quizzes to earn little bit of gems to open packs. These little gems can be the reason you packed 100 overall plus player. And I know they look like a scam, but they really do work. I tried them and they 100% work. And I always thought these type of ads were a scam, but EAFC proved me wrong. Once you have enough gems, you can go to the store and try your luck and open these packs, which I recommend, but never go for the cheapest and lowest packs, because nine times out of 10, you'll get nothing good. And if you're wondering which packs to open, always go for the discounted or the 300 or 400 valued packs. I shouldn't have to tell these tips. And if you're wondering which packs to open, always go for the discounted or the 300 or 400 valued packs. I shouldn't have to tell these tips. I know some of y'all know these tips, but I'm trying to give y'all the best options. For free to play players, another way to help you boost your team and get some good players is grinding in H to H or VSA so you can open division rivals packs. And they are also good to pack as well. And if you don't know what are division rivals, then here are the division rivals packs. And they damn good too. I hope and pray you get something good for all y'all free to play players. Another advice is if you're a free to play player, there's no chance you should be skipping events or not playing events. Events are to help you. Bro, you should complete them and grind. For them, you'll always get a good player from events like these and if you want a trick or treat breakdown, let me mow. Yeah. And this is the game changer, as I always said. Star Pass are a game changer because if you're paid to win, you automatically get good a player. But if you're free to play, you settle for a less expensive and less efficient player. If you can ask your mom for seven to eight dollars to buy the star pass, you'll be set for life. But if your mom declines, then there's other options, trust me. Now, if you're a free to play player, you can try some exchanges and player exchanges. You can get good players from here. And you must understand one thing. If you're a free to play user, you don't have leverage or ability. Choose what you want. You must take and go. No questions asked. You can also do the daily market picks to help you pick and choose players from the market picks section, but this can take time and building up market picks. But to get more leverage, you can try doing coins exchanges because if you do so, you'll become rich within a couple of months or weeks. For example, if you do the 1 million coins exchange daily for 30 days, that's 30 millions. If you do 60 of them, that's 60 days. But to help you get more coins, and I do recommend this, and that is selling your unwanted players. Don't overdo this though, because you'll lose player to train. So therefore, sell your unwanted players to a certain degree. Sadly, there isn't any way to trade your untradeables. You gotta live with them for the rest of your life. Sadly, I pray EAFC should change this. Sadly, there isn't any way to trade your untradeables. You gotta live with them for the rest of your life. Sadly, I pray EAFC should change this. And if you still have an overall under 94, you should probably go for other games like eFootball or NBA 2K because EAFC isn't for you, buddy. Nah, I'm just playing bros. I can leave y'all like that. Now, it's a different story. If you have FC points, you can easily open packs for cheap and easy. Anyone can get some good players if you have FC points. But this comes with a different price. You'll need real life money, of course, but there's two way to go about that. You can spend a lot of money and pack great players, or you can spend a lot of the real life money and get nothing. But formation, I'm going to be using 4-3-3 formation to build my lineup. And also I'll be recommending the best players for that position. Best right back in Alexander Arnold. For your right back, make sure he has good dribbling, passing, defending, and pace. Also his training level, make sure he good on that. 
Shooting doesn't matter for any right back, but it will create another dangerous attacker in your team, a player who can dribble and score. The most important player in the game is your goalkeeper, and when shopping for goalkeeper must, sure he has all good around skill sets, like diving, positioning, handling reflexes, kicking and physical. All these stats matter because it will make a difference in games when opponent are shooting at your goal. And for my goalkeepers, here's some goalkeeper I recommend. You can go for the top players or alternative cards. First goalkeeper is Manuel Neuer, who I use now and is one of the best goalkeeper right now. Now, next goalkeeper might be the best goalkeeper in the game right now, and I mean right now, and that is Van der Sar. And I have nightmares from FIFA Mobile. He used to be OP in FIFA Mobile. No cap. Now let's move into the next goalkeeper, and he also good to use, and that is Koble. And he was recommended from many of fans. I like him and his underrated is rushing, and he also got good height. And one of the most underrated goalkeeper we have is Courtois. He doesn't come with any negative, in my opinion. If you're a beginner, I definitely recommend using Courtois for a been a beginner. For your center backs, I recommend having two center back formations because it will help you overall defending and will make it harder for your opponent to score against you. When you have a two center back, make sure you have two versatile players. For example, have a tall defender and a fast defender. These two help because then it will become more hard for opponent to do what they want. You can block cross spammers and clear and defend a lot faster, but make sure the center backs aren't short or have bad physical stats because then they will get pushed away and easy to beat. Here's some center back recommendations. I recommend Franco Brisi, he's really good. I also recommend Van Dyke. He's another top defender. Another top defender I recommend is Paolo Maldini. He's really underrated too, y'all should check these players out. Now Van Dyke got okay pace and not so good of a passer, but you shouldn't be using center backs to pass. He's defending, and physical are really good, and can't forget his height and weight. He can keep up with anyone and tackle anyone, including Haaland. Franco Brizzi has some good defending and physical, although he has bad pace and passing. It will limit things you can do with him. But if you have good tactics, the you should be good. And what I mean by tactic is not using him as passer or to run with him. Theo Hernandez, a left back. And I really like him, no diddy, but he might be one of the best left back in the game right now, no doubt. Except if we're talking about Roberto Carlos. But he also has good defending and dribbling. He a decent passer as well. What to look for in left back? One, defending two, dribbling three, tackling four. Decent to good physical. And for my formation, I'm using a 4-3-3 attack. And with these formations, then you should have some midfielders position. You can choose whatever you like. I can't judge you. You can choose from CDM, CAM, or CM. For me, I have three midfielder positions. Two of them are normal center midfielders, and one is an attacking midfielder CDM. Your CDM must sure he has good balanced attacking, but his main skill set is defending. So get a good CDM that has good physical and defending cam. And for your cam, you should look for pace, but not too much. And make sure your midfielder has good shooting, dribbling, and passing. And I mean, a lot of passing and dribbling. For your attacking midfielder, you shouldn't worry or have good defending or physical. Or for your center midfielders, you should really have all good skill sets. And I mean, he should have all greens on the board. Pace, shooting, passing, dribbling, defending, physical. Now let's start with your attacking for you attacking. And I'm going to be using 4-3-3 attack. And for you striker, your main focus is having pace and shooting. These two matters because you're going to be shooting and running, that's it. And for your left wingers and right wingers, your main focus is very simple. And that is one. Pace two, dribbling three, pace. But I don't want to hold y'all for too long. This video is getting long. And if y'all want a part two, let me know in the comments section. 500 likes, and I'm dropping a part two with extra sauces and tips. But this is the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please like it up and subscribe. For more FC Mobile content,